Hello everyone, my name is Ravi Prakash and um, it is my pleasure to present this work jointly with my PhD students Afshin and Ali Hassan at UT Dallas. Here is the outline of our presentation. First, we provide introduction of our work, then we'll overview the related work. Finally, we'll present the proposed solution and the results. The accuracy of viewport prediction is very important for adaptive 360 degree video streaming. If we were able to predict viewport for longer horizon accurately, we could prefetch and buffer more chunks of the video, which helps the client to provide smoother video playback under challenging network conditions like Wi-Fi. However, viewport prediction is very challenging. For short prediction horizon, viewport is close to previous samples. But for longer horizon, more than two sec that is more than two seconds, viewport prediction accuracy drops. A buffer of more than two seconds is desirable for streaming under unstable network conditions. In this paper, we try to investigate viewport prediction problem for predictions of longer horizons, more specifically for the scenarios where we have access to the history of previous viewers. In this work, we study a data set of viewport traces and apply clustering methods on the traces to see how users' viewport pattern changes over time in relation to the clusters. Then we propose a prediction method that incorporates both individual users' viewport pattern and the history of other viewers watching the same video. Previous, previous viewport traces are clustered on the server side. The pattern of the created clusters will be used for prediction. For each new viewer, their viewport is matched to one of the clusters. And if their viewport is matched to one of the available clusters, the center of that cluster is used in the future as the predicted viewport. Viewport prediction can be based on current viewer samples, previous viewers history, and content specific features. Different techniques have been applied to solve this problem. Some solutions use variants of linear regression model on each user. Some other methods use machine learning techniques, mostly time series prediction based methods such as LSTM. These methods are trained based on the history of viewers. Additionally, some clustering methods have been proposed to cluster users viewport. These clustering techniques can be used for prediction as well. In some existing methods, viewport is represented in spherical or Cartesian coordinate systems and prediction is applied on each component independently. This may result in some inaccuracies in prediction because, for example, on equirectangular projection, for higher pitch values, the actual viewport movement for the same difference on your component is reduced by a factor of the cosine of pitch. So instead of predicting each component separately and measuring the error on each individual component, they should be considered together. We propose a method based on clustering of viewports. Both history of current viewer and previous viewers on the same content is considered for prediction. Previous viewports are clustered on the server side in advance. Current viewers viewport is matched to one of the clusters in real time. Finally, the future viewport position of the cluster is used as the prediction for the user. We model viewport as a spherical cap with FOV equal to 100 degrees. The viewport shape is not completely a circle, but this model approximates viewport on head-mounted displays and makes viewport overlap calculation easier. For field of view, of about, which is about 100 degrees in most of the head-mounted displays. The center of viewport is denoted using quaternions. For viewer v at time t, we show the viewport with q sub v comma t. The goal of prediction is to determine viewport at time t plus delta. The distance between two viewports is defined as the great circle distance between the two viewports as shown by theta. Using spherical cap modeling, we can find the overlap between two viewports using the formula for the surface area of the intersection of two spherical caps. It only needs the field of view and the distance between the two viewports. In this study, we use a viewport data set with 28 videos categorized based on the camera motion and the number of moving targets. We have three different 
notions of the number of moving targets and five camera motion patterns for a total of 15 categories. However, because we could not find satisfactory video for one category, we limited ourselves to 14 categories and two videos from each category for a total of 28 videos. This results in 15, okay. The data set has 60 participants and each video is watched by 30 viewers. These categories provide viewport traces with various characteristics we were interested to investigate the importance of moving objects in the video and their effect on the pattern of viewport changes. For clustering, we use the method proposed by Rossi et al. The advantage of this method is that it creates clusters based on the closeness of viewports on sphere. In specific time intervals, if a group of viewers are less than one-tenth of a pi radians apart for more than 60% of the interval, they are considered as a cluster. The problem of finding clusters is equivalent to finding the maximal clique among viewports. The advantage of this method is that it considers closeness on sphere and all components of viewport are taken into account. We investigate the usability of history of viewport traces of other viewers for viewport prediction. Some videos have fewer clusters with higher population. The viewers watch certain areas of the video known as the region of interest. We are interested to see if viewports in the same cluster have similar movement patterns in the future. Whether a viewer who is watching the region of interest viewed by a majority of previous viewers will follow the same viewport path as previous viewers. To examine this, we cluster viewports in specific time interval. We set clustering window to one second. And if for 90% of the interval, viewports are less than 30 degrees apart, they form a cluster. 30% threshold guarantees viewport overlap of at least 60% among viewers in a cluster. For each formed cluster, every delta t seconds, we measure how dispersed the viewers in the same cluster are in the near future. If the viewers are not very dispersed in the future, it shows that they follow the same region of interest over time. For measuring the dispersion of viewports, we measure their closeness for different prediction windows of 1 to 10 seconds. Closeness is defined as the average of distances of all viewports to the cluster center. Cluster center is the quaternion that has the minimized total distance to all viewports in the cluster, which we show as phi. Then using the cluster center, we define closeness as the average great circle distance between each viewport sample and the center, which is denoted by theta. Here, we see the results of closeness for all videos. This included measurements for clusters of size 3 or more. For prediction window equal to 1, the average closeness is not greater than 30%. This implies that viewports still have high overlap after one second. Depending on the video category, the closeness is different. For videos with strong region of interest, for example, video nine, with only one moving object, the closeness value is lower. Smaller closeness for a prediction window shows that viewports in the cluster stayed close to each other over the period of prediction window. For field of view equal to 100 degrees, if viewports are less than 40 degrees apart, they will have about 60% overlap. So for videos with lower closeness value, we can use the clustering based solution for prediction. Here we present the details of the prediction algorithm. Assume that for each viewer which, who has watched the video previously, we have their viewport trace on the server side. Since the number of views for a video can be in the thousands or more, the prediction based on history of viewers should be scalable. It is not possible to compare the viewport of current viewer to all other previous viewers. Our proposed method has two functionalities, classifying current user to a cluster, and then predicting viewport based on the matched cluster. So first, let's look at cluster. 
A server stores traces of views as unit quaternion of viewport center with sampling rate of 30 samples per second, or one sample every 30th of a second. The server runs the clustering algorithm offline and periodically. We define a clustering window at specific timestamps aligned with the video chunk duration. For each video, the clustering is done every second. We cluster existing traces according to the clustering method that was presented earlier for each clustering window. Server stores the center of each cluster at the trace sampling rate, that is every 30th of a second. The center is the quaternion average of all viewers in the cluster. We also define the prediction window, and the center of each cluster is stored for the prediction window as well. In the second step, which is the prediction step, we find the closest cluster for the current viewer in the clustering window. In order to classify a viewer according to the clusters, we examine if the viewer viewport can be matched to one of the clusters. If viewport samples are within 30 degrees of a cluster center for the duration of clustering interval, that cluster is selected as the match. If a cluster was found, we use the center of that cluster for prediction. Otherwise, if no cluster is found, we use a fallback method that is based on individual user's viewport pattern. We use the most recent viewport sample as the fallback method. For experiments, we use prediction window of half a second all the way up to 10 seconds. We compare the performance of different techniques. And these techniques are last sample, LS, which uses current viewport as predicted viewport, linear regression, LR, where yaw and pitch are extrapolated using linear regression on samples in past one second, Quaternion extrapolation, QE, where linear combination of rotations in the past one second are used. And you can find details of this method in the paper. And finally, clustering, which is our proposed method. For clustering, there are two sets of prediction. For some predictions, we can find a matching cluster and get prediction based on that. We call that subset clustering results, or CR. The complete set of results that we get from our proposed method is called overall cluster results, or OC. Additionally, we apply the fallback method, which is using last sample as prediction for the subset of cluster matched results CR, and we call that last sample on cluster results LC. We divide the data set into two sets, 80% for clustering and 20% for prediction. We repeat the same procedure until the average prediction accuracy converges to a stable value. The accuracy of the prediction is measured as the overlap between predicted and actual viewport. Depending on the content of the video, the results that we get changes. Here, the performance of LS is better. This video has no specific region of interest, a scenery of mountains with no moving target. In this case, using the center of cluster for prediction results in worse accuracy compared to LS. Only 19% of the times the prediction is done using clustering, and for those 19%, the accuracy of clustering is lower than last sample. Therefore, it is better to avoid clustering prediction for such videos. This could be determined by looking at the population and pattern of clusters used for prediction. For another video, you can see that for delta, which is the prediction window of greater than 3 seconds, using clustering prediction accuracy is higher. 42% of the predictions are made with clustering. For prediction at delta equal to 10 seconds, the viewport overlap is 17% better than using LS. It seems that clustering prediction works better for the cases with strong region of interest. This video has strong camera movement in one direction and moving object is in the forward direction all the time. Another observation is that the performance of linear regression techniques is much less than clustering best method and using last sample for longer prediction window. We also compare the performance of a proposed method with a LSTM-based method proposed by Wen et al. Here the comparison is done based on the reported results in their paper. We ran our method and last sample method on the same data set that they used. Each video was viewed by 48 subjects. The results are the average over all nine videos. It can be perceived that the LSTM-based method underperforms in all cases. Similar to the previous results, OC and LS provide better accuracy for short prediction window. 
It is worth mentioning that in their work, the accuracy is measured as the ratio of overlapping tiles between predicted and ground truth viewports. Our method measures the overlap area covered by the two viewports as the intersection between the two spherical caps. Since the tiles cover large area than the user viewport, in order to cover the whole viewport, overlapping tile results in higher accuracy numbers. In conclusion, we presented a viewport prediction method based on clustering. For videos with strong region of interest, this method achieves better accuracy for prediction window of five seconds and longer in more than 40% of the videos. For short prediction video, a window of less than three seconds using last viewport sample provides better accuracy. For future work, we'll include the characteristics of clusters to determine the prediction error. If a video has more clusters with fewer viewers, in each cluster, we can account for higher error. And for videos with fewer clusters and more population, we can increase the prediction confidence. If prediction error is higher, a larger field of view or more tiles can be prefetched by the client. Moreover, a dynamic prefetching algorithm could be proposed for viewport adaptive 360 degree video streaming. For the subset of viewers with focus on a ROI, the algorithm could prefetch video chunks for longer duration as the accuracy of prediction is higher. Here are the references and we thank you for your attention.